Soviet engineers were never afraid of crazy experiments. They built machines that were rugged, powerful, and sometimes completely insane. In this video, we are going to look at three unique Soviet projects that tried to revolutionize the trucking industry. From a missile carrier turned into a dump truck, to the legendary gas turbine Kraus and the gigantic Nami Yermak. Why did they build them? And why did these monsters disappear? Let's find out. Mass 7510, the missile dump truck. Our first hero is a machine that looks ready for war, but was painted in bright, cheerful colors. In the Soviet era, the Minsk Automobile Factory, or MAZ, produced the legendary 543 model in huge numbers. You probably know this truck. It is the massive eight-wheel beast used to carry Scud missiles and other heavy weapon systems. But the Soviet leadership decided that these military giants should also serve the peaceful economy. They wanted to adapt the missile carrier for civilian tasks. Soon, timber trucks, pipe carriers, cranes, and even fire trucks appeared on this chassis. But there was one version that was particularly interesting. It was a Mass 543 equipped with a dump body. It received the Index Mass 7510. To make it look less scary and more civilian, they painted the cabin bright yellow and the dump body orange. It was a striking look. But despite its formidable appearance, this modification did not become popular in the USSR. In fact, people often laughed at it. Why would anyone laugh at such a monster? The history of this unusual machine began in 1969. The first prototype had a dump body with a capacity of 11 and a half cubic meters. But the problem was the payload. Considering the massive size and power of the truck, the result was disappointing. This giant could only carry 19 tons of cargo. For comparison, the smallest quarry dump truck of that time, the Belaz 540, could carry 27 tons. The difference was huge. The engineers at Belaz were very skeptical about the idea of making a dump truck out of a missile carrier. They thought it was inefficient. However, the Mass 7510 had one massive advantage over the Belaz. It had an 8x8 all-wheel drive system and a central tire inflation system. Regular quarry trucks needed smooth, hard roads. But the Mass could drive anywhere. It was designed to conquer the swamps and snow of Siberia. It did not get stuck. It carried its 19 tons of rock at speeds of up to 60 kilometers per hour. In 1974, it was even shown at the main Soviet exhibition in Moscow. Its high ground clearance of 400 millimeters allowed it to work without roads. Construction crews did not need to wait for bulldozers and graders to clear a path. You just pointed this monster in the right direction and it did the job. But there was a catch. The engine and transmission remained the same as on the military version. It had a tank engine producing 525 horsepower. As you can guess, the fuel consumption was absolutely astronomical. This truck consumed more than 100 liters of diesel for every 100 kilometers. Because of this insane thirst for fuel, the truck was produced only in very small numbers for specific clients, like oil and gas companies. The military also used them occasionally for construction projects in the 1970s. But for regular companies, this truck was a burden. It broke down often, it was complex to repair, and it ate too much money. In 1978, the dump truck was modernized, but it did not save the project. By the 1990s, more economical and reliable imported trucks flooded the market. The specific missile carrier dump truck was no longer needed, and it faded into history. The gas turbine cross. Now, let's move on to something even more radical. The idea of using gas turbine engines in cars and trucks became popular in the 1950s and 60s. The jet age had arrived. Turbines were conquering the skies, so engineers thought, why not put them on the road? In the Soviet Union, specialists first tested these engines in labs and then decided to install them in heavy trucks. The design work was done by the Design Bureau No. 2, using the chassis of the cross trucks. In 1974, the first prototype rolled out. It was called the Cross E260E. Instead of a rumbling diesel engine, it had a 350 horsepower gas turbine unit. On paper, the turbine looked like a miracle. It produced much cleaner exhaust gases than a standard diesel. 
It weighed half as much as the standard UMZ engine. And theoretically, it was 20% more economical. But there was a major engineering challenge. A turbine spins incredibly fast. In working mode, the turbine shaft rotated at a crazy speed of 33,000 revolutions per minute. A standard truck transmission would explode instantly at such speeds. To fix this, engineers had to install a heavy reduction gearbox to lower the speed to a normal 2 or 3,000 RPM. The gearbox and clutch were actually bought from Hungary because the Soviets could not find a suitable local unit. But during testing, the truck failed. The complex transmission simply could not handle the stress and broke down. Two years later, they built a second prototype. It had an improved turbine with 360 horsepower. This engine was smaller, so it fit under a standard hood. But the truck, which weighed 22 tons, failed the tests again. The transmission was still the weak link. By the early 80s, the project was completely closed. But why did the Soviet Union spend so much time on this technology? The answer lies in the harsh Soviet winter. A gas turbine has huge advantages. First, it can run on almost any fuel, diesel, kerosene, or jet fuel. Second, and most importantly, it starts easily in extreme frost. In Siberia, where diesel turns into jelly, a turbine starts instantly. However, these advantages were only valid if the truck was driving at full speed on a highway. At low speeds, or in stop-and-go traffic, the fuel consumption was terrible. Plus, the lag in acceleration made it hard to drive. This was a global problem. American companies like Ford and GM also tried building turbine trucks, and they also failed. The era of jet-powered trucks ended as quickly as it began. NAMI 076 Yermak Finally, we have perhaps the most impressive monster of them all. Soviet designers always had plenty of crazy ideas, and one of them was embodied in a truck called the NAMI 076 Yermak. This massive 6x6 vehicle was inspired by French giants. In the 1950s, the French companies Willem and Berliad were building cyclopean trucks for oil exploration in the Sahara Desert. The famous Berliad T-100 was considered the king of the desert. The Soviets saw this and decided they needed their own king of the north. That is how the Yermak was born. In terms of design, the Soviet truck looked even better than its French rivals. It had a cab over engine layout, which gave the driver excellent visibility. The Yermak was a very advanced machine for its time. It was powered by a 300 horsepower V8 engine made by UMZ. There is a popular myth that it used a tank engine, but that is not true. The engineers knew that tank engines had a short service life, so they used a heavy-duty industrial diesel. This power allowed the Yermak to carry 25 tons of cargo on hard roads, or 15 tons completely off-road. Its top speed was 65 kilometers per hour. The truck itself weighed 21 tons. This was an amazing ratio. For comparison, the standard Cross 214 of that time could only carry 7 tons, while weighing 12 tons itself. The Yermak could do the work of three standard trucks. The technical stuffing was revolutionary. It had a three-speed hydromechanical automatic transmission, similar to the one used in huge mining dump trucks. It even had water-cooled disc brakes. This was sci-fi technology for a Soviet truck in 1963. Later, however, they switched to simpler drum brakes because the system was too complex. The Yermak was designed to work in extreme climates, from the burning heat of the desert to the freezing cold of the Arctic. It could drive through snow that was one and a half meters deep. The sheer size of the machine was staggering. It was 10 meters long and 3 meters wide. And sadly, these dimensions killed the project. The army was not interested because the truck was too big. It could not fit into any Soviet cargo plane of that time. The military preferred smaller trucks that could be airlifted. The engineers tried to save the project by offering it to the logging industry. They turned it into a timber carrier capable of hauling 45 tons of wood. But even here, there were problems. The original engine was not powerful enough for such heavy loads. They upgraded it to a massive V12 engine with 320 horsepower, but it was too late. The Yermak was simply too advanced and too large for the Soviet industry to mass-produce. 
there were no factories ready to build such a complex machine. The huge size, which was supposed to be its main advantage, became its curse. Later, some ideas from the Yermak were used in other vehicles, but the giant itself remained a unique prototype. A symbol of an era when engineers dreamed big, regardless of the cost. So, here's a question for you. Which of these three Soviet monsters do you think was the most impressive? Was it the missile carrier dump truck, the jet-powered cross, or the giant Yermak? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this dive into the history of red engineering, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I have many more stories about rare and unusual trucks coming soon. Thanks for watching.